What's up everybody? Angie here. Welcome back to my channel, The Angie Method. So glad that you're here. So I want to talk about walking and weight loss or walking and fat loss versus running. Sometimes I get questions in terms of what are the best ways to exercise to lose body fat and obviously we know most of it's going to come from nutrition. 90 to 95% of it when it comes to fat loss is calories in, calories out. And we can easily kind of monitor that or watch trends over time with your nutrition intake. But a lot of us want to be active. A lot of us want to see our body composition look like a more athletic version of ourselves. And so obviously that's going to happen with more of the exercise component of it. But when we're looking to burn more calories because the science says if you eat less than you burn in a day, right? So if your calories in versus your calories out are less, so you want your calories in to be less than your calories out, you realistically should lose body fat. But if you're doing nutrition intervention to work that, what else can you do to further make your calorie burn even more. So a lot of people think cardio, that's the best thing I can do. That's what's going to warrant the most fat loss or the most extra calorie burn. And yes, cardio is great. It is an easy way to get more calories in, but what kind of cardio is the best for you? That's what I wanna share with you on today's episode. All right, and hey, if you're new to this channel, don't forget, hit that button on the bottom, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the red button and subscribe so you can get some future notifications for episodes that are coming up. And this summer is going to be fun. I'm going to be sharing some of my go-to like salad dressing recipes, salad recipes, uh, grilled options, desserts. I'm going to share with you what I love to do for my fitness in the summer, obviously mindset tips and all the rest of it. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I am getting ready to go out on my walk and it is 930 and in Texas, you got to get out early. Since end of May, we've already been in the 100s and so as much as I like to do my walks actually in the middle of the afternoon. I love to get a work block done first and then I'll get out and kind of just let my mind reset with some walking that usually happens between three and four. It is insanely hot. Now I love the heat but I mean it's insanely hot. So I am starting off post daycare drop off with a walk to just kind of get my brain in the right place to get into some creative work, some production, whatever it is. So I'm going to get out and start walking and I'm going to share with you why I would choose walking as the best form of cardio if the goal is fat loss. Okay, I'm going to hope you can hear me okay because it's a little windy. However, it's gorgeous. It's 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. I'm out on one of my favorite little nature trails that's close to our house. It's behind one of the parks here. Because if I have the option to get out on a walk where I can see something that's super green and just a lot more space, a lot less like power lines or cars or streets or construction, which is my neighborhood, there's something about it, right? It really boosts your mood to see something green. And there's a lot of research out there that says like, hey, if you feel anxious, if you feel overwhelmed, one of the best things you can do is get outside and remind yourself of how huge this world really is, like how big of a place we live in and how much abundance there is. And that really helps when you also can see a lot of green space. So even if you live in the city, like just going somewhere to like a local park that has a lot of green space, it will make you feel totally different. So let's start with number one. Why do I love walking? I love walking because it does allow you to get out and to relieve stress and to relieve anxiety. And the more you move, the more you tell your body you're thriving, not surviving. And movement doesn't have to be a hard cardio session. It doesn't have to be a run. It doesn't have to be a HIIT training session. It can be as simple as just getting more movement in your day and in a low impact, low stressful way like walking. And so walking for the first reason I absolutely love it for weight loss is when you are eating less calories to lose body fat, that, that is a stress on your body, right? Your body doesn't like to be uncomfortable. It doesn't like to have less food. It's not meant to, it's not designed to, but it's the way that you lose body fat. And so if you're already feeling stressed from eating less food and your energy might be lower, combined with the stress of everyday life, maybe your work stress, family stress, social stress, financial stress, you couple that with even more high intensity cardio or running, you're just adding more cortisol to your plate. And cortisol is your stress hormone. 
down. And so a lot of women in particular might find that they hold body fat around their midsection. And that is usually directly correlated to your cortisol just being way too high too much of the time. And so if we're already stressed in a lot of different things and we're managing it best we can, what we can do in terms of extra movement in your day to give you more of that calorie burn, to make your deficit bigger from what you're actually eating compared to what you're burning to lose more body fat, walking's a great way to do that because it's so little stress on your body and the less stressed you are the more likely you are to get your body to actually lose weight the way that you want it to so reason number one that i absolutely love just using steps in a day it doesn't even have to be quote unquote a traditional walk all the time but being mindful of getting more steps in your day is because it's easy to do it requires no equipment, just you, yourself, a pair of shoes. It doesn't require a lot of time energy to get somewhere. You could just put on your shoes and go outside and go on a walk, and it is super low stress on the body. So that's number one. Use it for less stress, which is going to help you to drop body fat, especially in those areas of the midsection. Okay, number two. So a lot of people, when they are looking to change their body composition, most people are looking to lose body fat, they're not actually looking to lose muscle. And so when we think about what's the best way to utilize our time in terms of exercise, you want to mostly be strength training, especially if you're trying to lose body fat because strength training is going to keep muscle on your body or put more muscle on, you, on your body, giving you that athletic composition or physique most of us are looking for. And so if you have to pick like time versus what am I actually gonna do to move the needle, a lot of people are like, well, I'll just hit the elliptical for like an hour, or I'll do the bike, or I'll do a cycling class, or I'll do a rowing class. Again, yes, you can lose, or you can burn a lot of calories in that one hour session, but who has enough time to be doing one hour sessions seven days a week just to burn calories, right? Where you're already causing more stress on your body. So remember, it's still stressful. It is a time commitment and it's not gonna move the needle that much. So if you're someone, maybe right now you track your steps and you get 4,000 steps in a day and then you are, so that's you know what we would call slightly sedentary and you're looking to add more movement in, I would spend the time that you have available and do three strength sessions a week with the intention to put more muscle on. So make sure your program is designed to do that. And then I would use any extra time that you have to get out on a walk and to increase your step count from wherever you are. If you can get it up above 10,000 steps, 12,000, even 15,000, you are going to not only burn a lot more calories and we call it non-exercise activity where that's where most of our calories are burned in a day, but it'll be less stressful on the body. It'll give you a chance to put more energy into strength training, which is actually gonna change your physique body composition. And again, it's gonna be a time and a space that you can do other things you might enjoy. So maybe you love audible books, maybe you love podcasts, maybe you wanna use that extra time that you would put towards the elliptical to get outside on a walk and to connect with people. So maybe it's a time where you grab a girlfriend or a sister and you're like, hey, let's go on a walk. So now, not only do you get to burn more calories in a low impact way, get more movement in, which remember, more movement says you're a thriving individual, not a surviving in individual, which will give you those feel good feels, you also get to connect with someone. And so now you are using walking to not cause more cortisol because that cortisol is gonna keep that body fat around your midsection. You're using it for increased movement to tell your body you're a thriving individual, which will re reduce anxiety. And then you're using it for connection. So right there, it's, hey, use it for, to reduce stress and use your time you have available to strength train and then just get more steps in. So that's tip number two. By the way, I just wanna say, I just got these new Nike kicks and I just feel like they match my personality really well and they're so exciting to put on that it makes walking even more enjoyable. So if you're like, man, I want to get myself into walking, but right now I just, I don't love it yet. Maybe you just feel like, ah, oh, man, I just feel too busy. I don't know how I'd fit the time in. Make it a fun experience. <laughs> like I put on my favorite hats. I put on some new favorite shoes. I'll bring like my little fanny pack. I bring my AirPods. I listen to my favorite podcast. Like I make it an entire experience. That's all about me. That brings me joy. That gives me mental peace. So that's just a little tip for you. Make it fun. Okay, so let's talk about 
walking versus running, right? Why do I choose walking? So again, mostly to do with the stress and mostly to do with the cortisol that gets into your system when you're running. And maybe you've trained for a 5K, maybe a half marathon, maybe a marathon, and you're pretty mindful of your nutrition and you're like, I don't understand this. Like I am storing, not that you're gaining, but maybe you're storing more body fat around your midsection and you're like, I can't get over this. For the amount of activity that I do, I feel like I should be leaner. Well, a lot of people aren't paying attention when they're running, where their heart rate is and a lot of people are running in what we call more of the anaerobic zone so if you think about your 180 minus your age would be your heart rate that we would want to have at the top end for most of your run so maybe you weigh maybe you're 30 years old and it's 180 minus your age 30 150 should be about where your heart rate gets to at the most when you're doing most of your runs for training most people aren't paying attention to that most people are running above that heart rate zone which means they're actually tapping into sugar for their runs rather than fat for their fuel and so if you are running that's fine i would just be more mindful of where your heart rate is when you're running and again what kind of stress it's causing on your body because to keep up with those runs to keep up with that intensity, your body does shoot out cortisol and it has to bring blood or sugar into your bloodstream to assist with that. And so if you're like, do you enjoy running? Awesome. Could you be okay with not doing as many miles or not as many runs in sub some for walking to be less stressful on your body? So then you are less stress, less cortisol, more of the physique that you're looking for. And so I personally, I don't mind running, but I don't love it. And so I don't wanna do something else that I don't love. I wanna spend my time with movement doing something I truly, truly enjoy. So if you're someone who just thinks, I've heard running is the best for fat loss. That's what I should do. And maybe you're not even ready for runs. Maybe your body's not quite there. It hasn't built a foundationally sound body that can even handle the impact of runs. That's causing even more stress on your joints, more stress on your body. And so pick and choose what you love to do. But walking, it is probably one of, when you get into it, it's probably one of the most freeing types of movement for mental clarity, for just more physical act activity, to make you feel more resilient, to make you feel more bulletproof and so if you are someone who is looking to lose weight and you're pretty and maybe you're just not even doing that much movement at all right now just start incorporate walking like 10,000 steps when you think about it a mile takes about 2,000 steps so you can do it intentionally with actual walks or you can just be more thoughtful about how you spend your time in the day so maybe it's like hey I get home from work and usually I'm just so exhausted I just sit down or I make dinner and then I sit down after that with the kids maybe you're like I'm gonna go on a 15 minute walk especially right now when it's summer there's no better way to be more active with your family than on a walk or a bike ride with them and so look at where you can carve out 15 minutes will probably get you a mile so 2,000 steps maybe you do that first thing in the morning and use it like a little bit of meditation to set the tone rather than going straight to your phone and looking at your email or your text messages that already causes more stress you take that time and that space for yourself you get outside on a walk you get yourself in alignment you feel so good and so at peace going through the rest of the day it centers you so if you're someone who's like I don't know what to do for movement just get out and walk. The more you move, the better you feel. The better you feel, the more you're gonna make choices, actions, and behaviors that are in alignment with a healthy and fit person, and you're gonna feel amazing. So, walking for weight loss, it is one of the best things that you can do. All right, so that's what I got for you. Those are my tips. That, that's why I choose walking. And for myself, I aim to get anywhere between 10 to 15,000 steps in a day. I own a health and fitness business, obviously, but I don't own the gym anymore. So I'm not on my feet as much. Most of what I do is virtual. And so I sit down a lot. So I do have to be super intentional about getting more activity in my day. But what I love about steps is like, hey, I got a 10 minute break between a meeting. I'll just run outside and get some steps in, right? It just, it's so low maintenance, it's so low impact. I have found too, in my most lean self, when I feel like, wow, you look really good, walking is actually what helps me get there. I increase that step activity. It makes me feel just more energized. It makes me want to eat certain foods that are more sustenance, and it really pays off. So if you are someone who is watching this right now and you're like, wow, I've always been a high intensity trainer, or I've always been a runner, or whatever it is, I've gone so hard with cardio, and I'm mindful of my nutrition, I'm not getting the results I want, dial it back, try some walking. Use walking to reduce stress, 
Use walking for connection. Use the time that you would have done with cardio to do more strength training, to have that athletic composition. And use it just as a piece to tell your body you're thriving not surviving. Hopefully this all made sense and drop some comments below like what do you do for extra activity? What do you enjoy from movement? What are your thoughts around this topic? And again if you're new to the channel welcome. If you're returning I just want to say thanks for coming back and I'll look forward to doing the next one with you guys. All right chat soon.